Hey there, this is Anthony Metivier, and the reason you're looking at this filter is because I want to help you learn how to effectively filter out useless information when studying. Now, this is based on a question that I received from someone who is using the magnetic memory method and has studied it carefully, and so I want to go into it in detail. But before we get started, I would be delighted if you're not already a subscriber to the channel to just click that subscribe button. There's something new on YouTube, which involves this little bell here. And what happens when you click it is it gives you this and it says send all notifications for this channel. If you click it and then press save, then you'll see that the bell now has a little jingle thing, which means that you will receive the notifications. So in other words, on YouTube, subscribe doesn't really mean that much anymore. But uh, if you get the notifications, then you will receive further content from this. Now, one thing that's really important is that I want to be able to answer questions like this. They're very detailed, but I know there's the attention span problem, especially in video on YouTube. So if you have any suggestions about how to better answer questions like this, then please, by all means, let me know. But this is an experiment because I think that we need to really understand the question very carefully before that we can answer it. So I'm going to do my best with some arrows to go through it. But also, there's the attention span problem as such. And I think that if we can focus together, find ways to focus together, it is a great exercise to be able to go through material like this to really understand and then answer in detail. So I'm going to do my best with some arrows to guide us through the question, but I actually want to read it all because Mikhail is really working hard here to understand something. He's taken the time to ask a detailed question. And when I get detailed questions like this, I want to serve them. And one of that, one of the ways to do that is to honor the question by going through it in detail. So again, I want to serve you as best as I can, but this is a kind of an experiment. So let me know if this works in terms of answering this kind of question, and then we'll see what we can do moving forward to be able to do this so that people are getting the information they're looking for. But if you're a student or just someone interested in learning, I think that th this question and the reason I'm going to go through it in detail has everything to do with the fact that Mikhail is actually processing the question. And so when you come to someone and you show that you have thought about the process of the question, then that person is so much better able to answer you because most people just come and they have like a one sentence question and it's not really clear what they're struggling with. So this is the kind of way that you want to approach people when you have questions is with detail and show them that you've actually already tried doing what they're teaching because then they're enabled to help you even further. So let's get started with this experiment, see how it goes. And I would love to for you to help me help you better by posting in the comments below how this worked for you and sharing, of course, and being subscribed to this channel so that in the 21st century, professors like myself can actually teach in a way that's that's helping you noting the attention span problem, which I actually don't believe in. I think we need to just buckle down and really find time to study seriously. And so if a little arrow helps, then I'd be very happy to uh, make sure that every so often something is changing on the screen. So let's get started. Hi there and greetings from Finland. I love Finland. My question is both simple and broad, and it has to do with your great post on memorizing textbooks. In short, one could formulate it as this how to effectively filter the most important bits of information to memorize when studying large and confusing topics. I'm a student of comparative literature and philosophy at the University of Helsinki. Recently, my mnemonic efforts have concerned memorizing large courses, such as introduction to epistemology, including textbooks and lectures. The information is obviously quite theoretical, and the materials cover a bit of everything on the subject. Sometimes the lectures are ill-organized, and materials are only partly relevant to the subject. For me, coming up with colorful images and creating well-functioning memory palaces is relatively easy. The hard part is to figure out what to memorize in the first place. In your post about textbook memorizing, that would be the part of finding the big points and jotting them down. For example, with the introduction of a to epistemology course, I used 90% of my study time just filtering and organizing the messy theoretical information in memorizable chunks, and not only finding the right things, but also shaping them so that the big points are actually big, memorizable, and dense with information. But unfortunately, I can't help myself feeling insecure and unmotivated. Have I really found the right things? Or have I just wasted my limited studying time? And why does it feel so overwhelming, like comparing weightlifting with walking through the gym's sliding door after the practice? 
I'm aware my question is a bit off concerning your method, but since I have understood that you have studied film and philosophy successful with mnemonics, I'd be very glad to hear your insights and tips on this. Thankfully, yours, Mikhail. Well, first of all, thumbs up for sending this question. I really want to help you in the best possible way that I can. And it seems that one of the things here has not so much to do with the subject matter itself, but with organizing goals. And so I'm going to give you some tips from my perspective, but first I want to invite you to a webinar that is taking place that you can get onto right now, which is Seven Steps for Taking Control of 2017. And uh, you can register for three different times that are coming up. And you can use magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash BYE 2017 in order to get registered. Now, to be totally honest, there's going to be a offer at the end of this, but Michael Hyatt's stuff, his free stuff is so amazing that if you are somehow sensitive to people making an offer to buy something at the end, just go anyway because his free stuff is so incredibly valuable. I wouldn't even be mentioning it if I thought it was a waste of your time. Now, uh, on to your question. Well, first of all, Helsinki. I love Helsinki. I was just there recently. I made a video on YouTube, Helsinki Art Gallery Memory Palace video. Uh, check it out. I think you'll find that very useful and fun because you're from Helsinki. So that's cool. And I'm going to speak very directly to, to you in this video because you took the time to ask such an amazing question and you asked it in a way that actually enables me to help you. Now, you're right. I have studied philosophy and I have gone through a lot of overwhelm and I can tell you that there are solutions. Now, you mentioned how to memorize a textbook and you have obviously understood it very well. Now, for people who are watching this video who haven't gone through it, then please go in the description below. The link to this podcast will be there for you. And one thing I really want to suggest, I look at the data of how people visit my website, and it appears that most people just come and they download the audio, and they don't look at this infographic. So make sure that not only do you download this audio and listen to it, but also go through the infographic all the way to the bottom and understand it. And please I'm going to make this uh, better somehow because I want to help people with this technique. It's really useful, but um, it, it would help to have your feedback to know exactly what might be unclear about this. Uh, so combining the audio with the the infographic, if I can improve it in any way, by all means I will, but I need your help uh, in order to understand what it is that may or may not be clear. But Mikhail uh, apparently has no issue with it. And so again, congratulations. I'm really happy to hear that. Now, one of the things that I can suggest to you, in addition to making sure that you take this webinar, magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash BYE 2017, it's free. If you miss any of those times, um, I don't know if there's a replay or not. And if you happen to be watching this video in the later after this, uh, these webinars are, are, are going on, please go anyway because I'm going to have a link and it'll put you on an interest list if you're interested in hearing about this when it comes next year for... Uh, uh, the next time because it, Michael only does this once a year and it's really really powerful and it's helped me a lot I wish I had it back when I was in university I didn't so one thing that I did when I was back in university to help me know what was the most important information is that I listened to a lot of the great courses and now I don't want you to be overwhelmed by giving yourself even more stuff to go through but I really helped myself by listening to these audios because they are focusing on the most important things. And I listened to as many as I possibly could. And one of the things that I wish that I had had back then that I didn't, but you do have now, is the ability to make your own sort of audiobooks and listen to them at two times speed without the voice sounding like Mickey Mouse. So one app that I use now that I wish I had back when I was a university student is Audiobook Builder. Now, I think it's only for Mac, but uh, there's got to be some version for Windows as well. So um, get something like this. What it essentially lets you do is take an entire program like this, weave all the files together as a um, audiobook, and then you can listen to it twice as fast. And the cool thing is, is that it has this little bookmark here. 
And that bookmark is super powerful because it lets you just stop and you can go and listen to music or you can listen to some other podcast or whatever. And then you come back to the program and you just can find where you were. It'll just place a bookmark there and find it. Now, another guy that I really loved was Rick Roderick. And he also was part of the Great Courses series here. And uh, I highly, highly recommend if you can dig back into their past to find his stuff. Or you can, if you know how to do it, um, make an audio of the lectures that they have of his on YouTube and then uh, crush it into your own custom audiobook. Now, that takes time and so forth. If you've got a couple bucks, go on Fiverr and hire someone to do it for you. This is one strategy, even as a student with 25 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever, you can get people to help you. Just say, look, I want an audiobook of all Rick Roderick's videos and uh, I need it by such and such date. And, you know, for five, 10 bucks or whatever, it's free on YouTube. You can compile it into an audiobook. And then, and this is how I focus, this is how I find the right information. Go and listen to these audiobooks while you're just doing your exercise because fitness is really, really important while you're washing the dishes. I couldn't find a picture of myself washing the dishes, so I got a, a, a one that's a little bit more interesting here. But just walking around, doing your daily activities, like going shopping and so forth, I am listening to this day to audiobooks all the time. Looks like I have something in my teeth there. Sorry about that. But uh, uh, And I'm also taking care of my health, like uh, making sure that uh, I'm drinking lots and lots of water. This is my special soul bottle that helps me remember to drink lots of water. And uh, getting lots of sun is important to study and make sure that you are on track. And also, I journal a lot, and this helps me focus on what's important. What are the most important ideas? So I'll go and I'll listen to like Rick Roderick when I'm studying, and I will think of what are the most important ideas here that I need to focus on? And he'll tell me because he himself is focusing on the big ideas of epistemology, the really, really core stuff. And then I'll write about it. And I will do it no matter where I am in the world. Now, I took this picture for a different reason, but I was at a hotel and I take this journal with me everywhere that I go. And I journal the stuff that's key, that's important. And I write it down so that later I can put the key points into a memory palace. And again, Helsinki is a great place for memory palaces. So let's just go through your questions again to make sure I'm not missing anything. But the first thing is, is how to effectively filter the most important bits of information to help memorize when studying large and confusing topics. And one strategy is to let the people do the filtering for you. And there are so many lectures out there. So Rick Roderick is a great one. Calhoun, Calhoun is a great one. And it's just absolutely an amazing, amazing thing. And there are lots out there. You can consume them so fast so that when you go and you read the books, you already have someone who has isolated the huge points for you. And then when you use the how to memorize a textbook technique, taking care to make sure that you not only download the audio, but you go through the infographic, this is going to enable you to go faster because you've already had a primer on what are the big things that you need to be paying attention to. So that's a huge, huge point. So I hope that that helps you understand how I have gone about effectively filtering out the most important information. And you can make that as part of your lecture as well. So if you're going into a lecture hall from your professor, record the professor's lecture. Just say, hey, can I leave this recording? Can I leave my MP3 phone or iPhone or whatever you call your smartphone on the desk? Record the lecture and then turn it into this so you can listen to it at tw twice speed and then get your how to memorize a textbook realistically uh, training you know in your mind so you know what to do and focus on the most important parts because you're going to get a compound effect the more that you're following these guys and you're doing it quickly you're key you're letting them tell you what the key points are and then you're crushing down your lectures from your professor and then you sit down and you read all these books you're going to train yourself very quickly what are the key points when you use all these techniques together and then you bang, you have a memory palace, just draw out this. I mean, I drew out this art gallery itself that had these blueprints inside of it so I could use it for a memory palace. And you just get faster and faster and faster so that when you're out getting your exercise, taking care of your body, being physically fit, you can review the information in your mind and you're reviewing the big stuff, the important ideas, right? Now, the thing about things being theoretical and ill-organized, 
this is just what knowledge is. Knowledge is something that is just so disperse and so unattached in many ways, but you find the attachment by diving in and keeping moving forward. So please don't think of it as ill-organized. I, I, I don't have a slide for this, but the philosopher Gilles Deleuze, he was talking about the rhizomatic effect of information. And so really what ends up happening is that you actually see that it's not as disorganized as, as it may seem, but you need to be in the territory and you need to create maps and then you need to understand that the maps are not the territory that you're in, but it comes from not so much trying to figure out what to memorize in the first place, but just getting started and then learning what the big points are as you go along. And so please don't think of it as being messy theoretical information that 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 is just impenetrable. You just need to find the things that you understand and then keep moving, keep moving. So those big points, they aren't as big as they seem once you just get some traction, once you enter the door. So you just need to start anywhere, begin anywhere, and you're not going to waste any time by doing this. Your time is limited, as so is mine, and you don't need to feel overwhelmed. And this is a great image that you've come up with comparing weightlifting through walking through the gym's door, right? Well, you got to start somewhere, right? If you want to lift weights, you have to actually have spent some time going to the gym and you have to open the door in order to even get to the weights, right? So pick the book that's hard, use the techniques that I've been talking about, you know, and in, and, and you'll get there, you'll get there. And you can supplement it all by just having a audiobook uh, pr program and being able to isolate the important ideas, the ideas that stick out to you, cr make a memory palace, use this technique, and then go back to more, and then go back to this, and then get some more from this guy, and also check with your professor to make sure that you're on track, and uh, spending your time learning more and reviewing your memory palaces and make sure you're getting lots of sunlight and so forth and also lots of water and just keep moving forward and journal all the time and use your memory palaces. That is the best advice that I can give you here and you're already on the path so I congratulate you again. It's just a matter of keeping going and having your mindset in check because I, I'm concerned that you're labeling it as ov overwhelming when really what you want to do is just tell yourself, this is manageable, I can do this, and I will do this. And then taking steps so that you're using something like daily journaling to keep yourself on the path again and again and again, constantly reasserting the positive message and knowing that you have absolutely 100% focused on your goal. And your goal is very clear. It's just a matter of then isolating the little steps inside of it. So again, I really would encourage you, I'm going to be on one of these calls and it maybe we'll be on the same one, which would be cool. So please be sure to take the opportunity to get on magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash BYE 2017 so that you can have some more guidance and there are seven steps that you can follow. And I understand that it's more to consume, but this is high priority. This is, this is the kind of information that will really, really make everything a lot easier. And the things that I'm talking about, I understand there's a bit of overwhelm as well, but you just got to get started somewhere. And I was so delighted to read in your email that you already are on the path. So I think that, uh, I think you're at a, a level of Jedi mind tricks in a way where you, you, you can't, you can't get involved in thinking about things being so overwhelming all the time. It, you've just got to treat them as they are, break them down, and get some interesting steps going for yourself. And that, I just don't have the exact perfect answer for where to start, but you're already started. So that's what one of the things that I did, and I didn't even have this tool back then. I had to absolutely just listen to things either at Mickey Mouse speed, which I tried, which didn't work, or I just listened at uh, normal speed. 
And the cool thing is with the great courses is that they tend to be 15 or sorry, uh, about 20 to 45 minutes uh, long. And you can really just blast through one lecture at a time and you'll, you'll be told what the big ideas are so that when you're reading the books, you'll isolate and you'll, you'll be able to look for them. You'll be able to look, use this technique better because you've had someone give you a heads up of what's important. And if you go to a lecture, like I hope that you're, unfortunately Rick Roderick has passed away, but I'm just using this image to show your own lecture with your own professors, just ask to record the call and then use Audiobook Builder to get it down and then use this technique in addition to that so you're writing down the key points, which you already know. Anyway, I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to sum up the, the key points here. I think you're going to find this really, really helpful. And don't neglect exercise, drinking lots of water, getting as much sun as you can. And I know that in Helsinki, that can be difficult. I actually uh, can tell you there's something called Human Charger, which you should look into. I'm not going to get into it too deeply right now, but it's by a company in Finland. And uh, I have a great relationship with them. So if you go to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash jet lag, you can get some information about that. But the key thing is, Make sure that you uh, find time for this webinar, magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash BYE 2017. If you use that link, that is really, really great because it helps me continue doing this work. So in sum, I was really stressed out at a certain point. I dealt with this. I've been through this. And I really, really, again, thumbs up, congratulate you for taking action, for asking a really good question. And uh, for those of you who would like more information like this, just make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you click that little bell there. You're going to get uh, this send me all notifications from this channel thing. Click that, and then you'll see that the little bell is ring a ling 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 and you can join these 8,000 subscribers. And by the way, I really appreciate everyone who's been subscribing to this channel, sharing the videos and so forth. I've heard that YouTube will give me studio access if that I reach 10,000 subscribers. I don't know if it's true or not, but if they do, that would be great because it would really help me figure out how to make these videos better for you. And I really want to be able to address great questions like this in detail. So again, please help me out how this could be done better for you. And I, as long as I keep uh, being able to fund myself, I will do as much as I possibly can for you to help answer questions like this because I really, really care for you as a student. I've had huge struggles myself. I managed to sort it out. I managed to get a PhD. I managed to do all kinds of great things that you can't do if you don't have a PhD, like having a research grant and so forth. So when you send me questions, please don't make it one little sentence. Write this and show me you're already on the path because then I'm going to jump to your aid as best that I can. And I'm going to ask you to help me be even more helpful to you. So thumbs up to everybody and join this call because I know you're going to love it. I benefited from what Michael has to say many times over the last couple of years. And I am also attending and taking notes. And, you know, uh, the, it's just... It's just amazing that people do this. And yes, if you're uh, sensitive to an offer, just accept that people make offers to help you even more. But I wouldn't be sending you to this if the free stuff wasn't exceptional. So please take this opportunity to uh, to learn about taking control of 2017 with Michael. And, uh, and, and just using this link helps me continue this work. So magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash BYE2017. I appreciate you very much for watching this video. And again, I'd be delighted if you'd be subscribed and definitely get the notifications going so that I can continue helping you further. And if you have any questions about how to effectively filter out useless information, please use the discussion area below. And uh, yeah, I will do my best to answer the best questions in a very detailed manner and talk to you soon. So this has been Anthony Metivier from magneticmemorymethod.com. We've talked about how to effectively filter out useless information when studying. And until we speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Mm -hmm.